Well, we are talking voice referendum. We will do so for the next four weeks, but it has been a bit of a different day, not as much in terms of that parliamentary fight, but two significant contributions. We had Jacinta Price earlier today with an address to the Speech Club. And in terms of the optics, Michael Long, ex-AFL star, on a walk from Melbourne to Canberra to try to raise awareness and support for it. To take us through all the developments today, our political editor, Andrew Clennell. So, yeah, I felt like a bit of a different day, but still yes and no campaigning today on The Voice. How's the day played out? Have we seen the last Dorothy Dix that we're going to see on The Voice? I was just reflecting earlier, if it goes down, we might see plenty of opposition questions when they come back a couple of days after the referendum, but the government would be keen to talk about something else if, as the polls suggest... This referendum is unsuccessful. So Anthony Albanese joined former Essendon great Michael Long on the long walk and not for the first time when it comes to this voice referendum, became a bit emotional about it all. In 1927, Jimmy Clements, a Wiradjuri man, like our Indigenous Affairs Minister, a Wiradjuri man walked from Tumut to join with the Duke of York for the opening of Parliament here in Canberra. Police tried to remove Clements because he'd arrived after such a long walk from Tumut, dishevelled and barefoot. The crowd rose up and said, no, Indigenous people have a right to be here. What do they teach us? What do they teach us? All right, it's not the first time he also got emotional when he shook Michael Long's hand. And reminded me of when the PM, when he released the wording for the referendum in March, got emotional again. To not put this to a vote. So I just like to, to not put this to a vote is to concede defeat. You only win when you run on the field and engage. And let me tell you, my government is engaged. We're all in. Well, he's run on the field, all right. But October 15 looks like being a grim day for the PM if the polls are anything to go by. Today, he was careful to distance himself from the Marsha Langton comments released this week about Australians being racist. Prime Minister, just talking about that handout, that offer, you've talked about the importance of unity and dignity on this walk. Michael Long's talked about love and about listening as well. Do the comments from Marsha Langton risk undermining that message that as many as 20% of voters are, are racists or spewing racism, that Peter Dutton, David Littleproud are appealing to racist bases? Is that undermining the message that's being offered? Oh, look, I've called, as has uh, the Minister for Indigenous Affairs, mm. uh, for everyone in the debate. Uh, to be respectful. Uh, that's the way that uh, we're conducting ourselves. It's not about any individual on either the yes campaign or the no campaign, for that matter. Uh, it's about a simple proposition that people are being asked to vote yes for. A similar message from that in question time from the PM. Here are those comments from Marsha Langton again. Every time the no case raises one of their arguments, if you start pulling it apart, you get down to base racism. I'm sorry to say it, but that's where it lands. Or just sheer stupidity. The surge of racist nonsense uh, is confined to a minority of Australians. Ordinary Australians are thinking, yes, of course I'm voting for the voice, um, and that would be, you know, say 48, 49 per cent. Then there's the hard no voters, and I'm hoping that they're about 20 per cent, and they're the ones who are spewing the racism. Families have been broken apart by social workers who are, by and large, white and racist. We need a, a radical culture change uh, to stop the... Uh, the police from criminalising more and more people uh, simply because the police are racist, um, because they get brownie points for rounding people up. 
And the PM wanted to tell Australians today that people shouldn't vote no with Peter Dutton's promise of a second referendum on constitutional recognition in mind. There are some who said uh, when the Republic referendum was held last century, don't worry, we'll wait for the next one. We're still waiting. The Leader of the Opposition has said that he'll hold another referendum. Um, we actually want to stop uh, discussing structures. This is a chance to get this done. And another notable moment, Michael Long had a shot at John Howard too over his recent comments on The Voice. In a letter in 2004, we informed John Howard that he alone, as the Prime Minister, could give permission for people across the nation to embrace the culture and concerns of Indigenous Australians. The Australian people, we wrote, would follow the example of their Prime Minister. There is plenty of negativity around the referendum from Prime Minister Howard. He has asked Australians to maintain the rage against the voice. But this is not about rage. It's about love. 